Hi everyone, my name is Meg. I'm a current PhD student at Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia. I'm going to share with you a small-scale study I did in 2020. It explores Chinese parents' perceptions of including gay and lesbian families in early childhood settings in Australia. Before we go into more details about my study, there are a few concepts that I would like to clarify. Um, early childhood settings in Australia comprise various types of services that involve the education and care of children from birth to five years before commencing school. These settings often refer to long day cares, preschools, kindergartens, and etc. As Australia is a signatory to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, early child educators in Australia are responsible for ensuring that all children have the right to be protected from any kind of discrimination, including the discrimination against their family structures. Inclusive practices for same-sex families vary from more subtle forms such as displaying lesbian and gay friendly symbols to those involve children's active learning about these families through book reading and discussions. I acknowledge that sometimes families come in many forms and have diverse ways of being. For this presentation, I will use the term sometimes families to describe families headed by lesbian or gay parents. And also by Chinese parents, I mean parents of Chinese ancestry those who either identify themselves as ethnic Chinese or have a Chinese heritage three generations back. Why is including same-sex families in early child settings important? The Convention on the Right of the Child and multiple policy documents in Australia uphold children's right to preserve their identity, including their family relations, and they should feel value and have a sense of belonging in the settings they attend, regardless of their family compositions. Children learning about diverse family types, including same-sex families, also supports the educational goal in this country that all young Australians become critical thinkers about important social issues such as equity, diversity, and discrimination and make informed choices in various scenarios now and in the future. Although children of lesbian and gay parents have been attending childcare preschools in Australia long before same-sex marriage were legislated in this country in 2017, these families are still experiencing silencing in the settings they attend. With prejudice and misconception untracked can make it difficult and risky for same-sex families to openly discuss their children's rights to feel valued, secure, and included. This also leaves children from same-sex families by themselves facing the uncertainty entering the classroom. It leaves lesbian and gay parents the job to explain and educate educators. Early child educators are in the front line of breaking the silencing around lesbian and gay families. However, Australian and international studies have found that they are underprepared for this responsibility. Some early childhood educators also consider it too risky. One of many concerns that these educators have is that parents in their services may not like them to talk about lesbian and gay families with young children. The problem is, we don't actually have much empirical evidence about how parents think about these issues. My review of the literature also shows that the perspectives of ethnically and linguistically diverse families in Australia, including those from a Chinese background, is absent in the current literature. Chinese parents is one of the most fast-growing communities in Australia. Early childhood educators are very likely to interact with Chinese families with young children in their settings. It will be helpful for them to understand Chinese parents' perspectives. But no research has identified studying um, Chinese parents' attitudes towards including same-sex families, nor their attitudes towards children learning about these families in early childhood settings, and more specifically in Australian context. To address these two questions, this exploratory study used a mixed matter design. What happened was that Chinese parents were invited to complete an online survey and then self-selected to participate in follow-up interviews. 
the online survey consisted of demographic questions and three measures of attitudes. Open-ended questions were also included to capture individual experience and understanding in this survey. The interviews followed a semi-structure design. The questions were developed based on the literature and themes from the survey. The survey data analysis at the end was based on a total of 54 participants. The vast majority of the participants were born in mainland China, lived in either the state of Victoria or New South Wales and identified as heterosexual. Six parents from five households were selected for the follow-up interviews. They all identify as heterosexual. One mother was uh, born in Taiwan and the rest were born in mainland China. The analysis of the attitude measures demonstrates an overall tolerance of lesbian and gay parents. These parents' support for including sentence families depends on how much children are involved in active learning about these families. They reported neutral attitudes towards passive inclusion like displaying lesbian and gay friendly signs and labels, but they often disagreed with using picture books featuring same-sex families, for example. They didn't think their children know anything about same-sex families. They didn't think children would be uncomfortable just playing with children of lesbian and gay parents, but they tend to perceive children as opposite to same-sex unions and uncomfortable with reading picture books about these families. The analysis of qualitative data reveals two key discourses. One is the discourse of equity and rights. That is, whose rights matter the most in making this decision about including same-sex families and about children learning about these families. Many parents viewed inclusive practices for same-sex families in early child settings as a crucial anti-discrimination strategy. They also indicated that developing these acceptance of diversity in children could reduce the impact of prejudice against marginalized communities in the long run. But as mentioned earlier, these parents were resistant of explicit inclusion that actually embraces the normalization and affirmation of lesbian and gay subjectivities. Parents in this study were primarily concerned about setting boundaries between enough appropriate knowledge and too much inappropriate information. They also worried that the boundaries set by educators on this matter may not match the boundaries they as parents would like to have. This raises questions among parents about who should be responsible for discussing diverse gender, sexuality, family types with children. Should it be done in educational settings or this topic should remain at home and up to parents' decision? These parents' self-reports reflect a belief about they have the rights and obligations to censor certain topics based on their perceptions and assumptions. Some reported that they would withdraw their children from early childhood settings where educators discussing same-sex families with children. Some indicated that they would avoid such discussions themselves at home or not engage children in deeper thinking on these topics when there are actually educational opportunities to do so. As mandated by multiple early childhood policy documents in Australia, and most parents in this study also agreed, children are entitled to a well-rounded education that enables an understanding of the diverse social cultural realities of their world. None of the participants, however, reported clear inclusive practices for same-sex families in the settings their children attended from their observations. Even practices to include diverse family structures were rare. It is likely that these topics were not addressed enough in these programs and in interactions between educators and parents. So findings from this study raise questions about how best early child programs can work with all parents who have this kind of inner debate to sustain the commitment to the focus on children's rights to become informed member of the society. 
Another key discourse amongst parents is the discourse of childhood innocence. For most parents in this study, fostering children's understandings of diversity and equity and creating an inclusive community for all was considered a benefit. But it was not regarded as necessary enough to address issues like issues related to same-sex families with children purposefully. Those who did consider educating children about same-sex families at some point still thought this kind of learning as irrelevant to children in early childhood unless their children were affected directly in some way. In other words, for many parents in this study, same-sex families should be addressed only if parents and educators could no longer withhold children's curiosity or they can no longer avoid a conversation with children about these issues. There were assumptions amongst these parents that learning about same-sex families in early childhood settings can be harmful to children who are considered innocent, vulnerable, heterosexual in default, and incapable of discussing diverse gender, sexuality, and family structures. According to these parents, topics about same-sex families were deemed adults only, or for older children at least. Children in early childhood would not be interested or capable of understanding these issues. These parents also worried about topics related to same-sex families being suggestive to children. They reported a perceived possibility of their own children becoming lesbian or gay or being confused about their sexual identity if alternatives to heterosexuality were presented to them. It reflects their belief that a person's sexual orientation is learned, can be changed, and even chosen as a lifestyle, which is not necessarily true and not as simple as it appears. It also reflects the widely held assumption that being heterosexual is taken for granted. And heterosexuality is a preferred sexual orientation for all children in early childhood settings. The misconception about the innocent child, however, has been countered by research. There is evidence of children trying to make sense of same-sex families in early childhood settings when they met children and parents from these families. There is also evidence of children involved in critical discussion and thinking about diverse sexuality and family structures and the social justice issues around same-sex families when they were given the space and resources to do so. Parents and educators require these up today reliable evidence-based information to alleviate potential fears and concerns. So the findings of this study highlights that the discussion about family diversity, including same-sex families in Australia, is too limited amongst educators and parents in early childhood settings. It is critical that early childhood settings actively engage parents and educators collectively reflecting on prejudice and stereotypes around same-sex families and the opposition against children learning about these families. Strong leadership is also required in keeping the anti-discrimination legislation to support the inclusion of lesbian and gay families. Greater and more explicit support from policy and curriculum is also needed. With accumulating evidence, I firmly believe that when early childhood educators are empowered to break the silencing around same-sex families, all children and their families will benefit from a broader and deeper understanding of diverse family types. Like a stepping stone, this study presents an important opportunity to promote respect, equity, inclusion, and social justice for all children and families in the early childhood sector. So that's all from me today. I'm also working on further research on this topic at Macquarie University. So if you have any questions or comments, please drop me an email. Thanks everyone again for listening.